Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dustmos, and today I'm here talking about the Modor NF1. The NF1 is a virtual analog synth that has a few tricks up its sleeve. Um, it's got a few unique things that you're not going to see on a lot of other synthesizers. The first and main feature that is really unique is the formant filter, um, which is a sort of human speech emulating vowel type uh, filter that adds a really interesting character to a lot of the sounds that you can sculpt in the NF1. Another really cool thing is this wire system that is essentially a way to route modulation throughout the machine. Um, there are seven different wires you can uh, route um, with 17, I believe, sources and like 89 destinations or something to that effect. So you can get pretty hands on and have some really cool modulation happening um, all throughout the uh, digital brains of this synthesizer. In addition to um, what I've already covered, there are three oscillators with lots of waveforms um, that have some pretty cool features as well. Um, multiple, you know, LFOs, um, built in effects with a chorus flanger and a delay and a traditional filter in addition to the formant filter. In this Signal Colors palette video, I'm basically just going to do a higher level overview of everything that the NF1 is, um, go over a lot of the sounds, demo it, just kind of go through presets, get hands on um, crafting, molding the sounds, and uh, just kind of give you an idea of um, maybe what to expect if you were to pick one of these up. Okay, so let's jump into the um, little bit more granular sections here um, before we hook it up and hear what it sounds like. Okay, so this first section is the oscillator section. Um, as you can see, we've got some buttons and some knobs. Um, these three buttons, they each have a little LED in them, which tells you which oscillator you're controlling. So if you select one of them, um, the one will light up, and that means all these controls will be controlling what's going on with just that one oscillator. Um, you can select multiple, one and three, two and three, one, two, three, whatever you want. You just press and hold. I don't really have to hold, just press all of the ones you wanna select. You'll see them light up, and then you'll know you're controlling that. So if you want to do a um, sort of a coarse um, like pitch adjustment across all of your oscillators, then you can tune them all like that. So same thing kind of goes for this waveform selector. Um, you can tap that. It'll cycle through these LEDs that tell you what type of waveform you're selecting. So for the different waveforms, you've got a sawtooth with uh, pulse width modulation, a square also with pulse width, triangle as well. Um, then you've got a sync oscillator. This one is additive harmonics, uh, which is pretty cool. You've got a sonar noise, a wind noise, an arcade noise, um, and then FM, and then a feedback FM. So kind of as I mentioned um, here, you've got a, um, the, a tune, which is like a coarse tune and a fine tune, um, and then a modulation knob, which is just the amount of modulation, um, or just the modulation parameter that is assigned to the oscillator. Um, then you've got the LFO amount and envelope amount. So really just how much those two impact um, the oscillator that you have selected, even if it's multiple. These buttons are FM uh, carrier and modulator um, selectors. And this is a mixer section. So each one of these represents the volume of each oscillator, one, two, and three. Um, you've got noise and also a ring modulator that modulates between two and three. Over here is your filter section um, with a button to select which type, low pass, high pass, band pass, and notch. A big wheel for cutoff. Um, you've got LFO and envelope amounts, keyboard tracking, um, as well as your resonance of your filter. And then this kind of unique drive control, which is just uh, driving the output of the filter. Moving over here, you've got the formant filter section. Um, and you have, again, the LFO and envelope amounts, um, a mix amount where you can bring in just a little bit of the formant sound if you want. Um, and that's selectable as well um, between parallel and serial with the normal filter. So you can kind of change up whether, um, yeah, it's one after the other or they're running alongside each other. Um, and you change that with the routing button here. And you can change the vowel, so like A-E-I-O-U, um, type sounds by cycling with that button there. Over here is your LFO section, um, one, two, and three, as well as a sample and hold. Um, you can choose to sync it with this button, and then you have uh, two different waveform um, selector switches as well. 
These have default routings, um, but you can change them with your uh, wiring setup as well, which I won't go into um, in this video because it's just a little bit next level. Um, but if you're interested in that, there's definitely some um, other materials out there that will kind of tell you a little bit more about how that system works. And I'll also link to the um, manual in the description. So this is your envelope section. Um, you've got four different selector buttons here, again with LEDs in them. Um, so you have your pitch envelope, your filter, uh, your formant, and your amp envelope. You've got your ADSR knobs here um, with a secondary time control. So it's a four stage envelope system, as well as um, level controls for the envelopes. This is your glide control. So you can go from um, no glide to a real woozy, smooth transition. And moving over here, this is your effects section. Um, and so you've got your chorus and flanger here and your delay here. Chorus and flanger, again, big mix control, uh, feedback, speed, delay, and depth. And then um, on the delay, mix, filter, time, feedback. Um, and it's really cool. The feedback is awesome. I'm a big fan of feedback, um, but you can really get a lot of character coming through with this system. Um, and it's cool, you know, filtering the delay as well. So you can just get those like, maybe, you know, cut out the bass, get a little bit of that twinkly, um, crispy high stuff just echoing out. So it's a, it's a cool system. Not to neglect this top area here. Um, you've got your power and volume here. And it's one of those that clicks to turn on and then, uh, and then you're controlling the volume, clicks to turn off and you turn it all the way down. The menu section um, has a select and value knobs, menu, source, yes, destination, no. Source and destination for your um, modulation routings, your wiring. Um, and then menu kind of to go in and out of the different menu systems. It's got a pretty minimal display, um, but that's totally acceptable, I think, because unless you're getting really in depth with your modulation routing and stuff, you're not really messing with the display too much. Um, and there's so much control here that I feel like that doesn't really matter so much. This happens to be one of the first gen units that doesn't have USB, um, but all of the second gen ones, which I think were all made after um, I think 2017 or something like that. Um, they have USB and if you really want to get in here, um, you can hook it up, use this uh, patch um, soft like library software uh, where you can back everything up, work on patches there, send them in to and from the machine. And uh, that's pretty cool. So you can kind of even avoid menu systems even further if you wanted to go that route. Okay, now that you have an understanding of really all the controls that are going on here, um, let's hook it up and hear how it sounds. I'm going to pair it with the Syntact, um, which I'm going to use to MIDI control the notes and sequencing going on, um, but then also provide um, the beats. So yeah, let's get hooked up. Okay, so now we're all hooked up with the NF1 um, synced up to the Syntact from Electron and it's providing the um, the beat, basically a kick and just like there's a little other stuff peppered in and um, also the MIDI control of the NF1. Um, I have them each running out stereo into the TX6, um, kind of off to the side here. Um, yeah for independent level control because some of these presets I'm gonna jump through, they can get kind of loud. Um, so I'll have to dial it back in. I mean, I can do that here, but 
you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But then yeah, from the TX6 little mixer into my camera. So yeah, as I mentioned, I'll go through some presets, um, but I'm also gonna really dive into the front panel and try to craft some sounds. Um, I'll try to switch up the like the chords and little stabs and um, whatever little melodies I write in as we go, just to kind of get some variation. But yeah, we're just um, on a little journey, so uh, let's check it out. Also, before I get started, um, I realize there's one thing I neglected to mention in my kind of control overview, and that is that the settings are set to um, in any kind of patch that you load um, to do that sort of like catch thing when you twist a knob. So um, when you start a preset, what the knobs are showing aren't reflecting the settings necessarily of the pre preset. And it would be a pretty slim chance if that were the case because um, there's so many knobs. Um, so what you'll see happen is um, uh, like the oscillators will, that'll be saved and turned on and off um, as you go through the presets. Kind of same here, you'll see these lights change and all that stuff. So you'll know what oscillators are active, um, but to change any settings, you'll kind of have to um, sort of twist through the range and see when it catches up um, to make those adjustments. There's actually a mode in the um, settings that will allow you to make it so like it only changes once you catch up to its position, but you can turn that off if you want. So yeah, basically what that means is what you see isn't always what you get, um, but you'll kind of notice when I go to make a, an adjustment to a sound, sometimes I'll do like a little sweep and then kind of dial it in, and that's, that's what's going on there. Okay, so this is my clean pattern, which right now is just a kick. Um, I have these other elements I will turn on and off as I see fit. but just a little something to keep time to and add a little bit of interest to what's going on. We'll start with just the kick for now. Um, so yeah, it's in the, I've, I've set one of the, um, the channels here, number eight to the MIDI control um, output. Um, this has an in, out, and through. Um, so I'm just going into the in, um, but yeah, you can control here. And so this is what the uh, initialized patch sounds like. It's a little, little one oscillator um, wave here. I'll go ahead and record something in, and um, yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. There it is. All right. I think that's good enough. It'll leave some space um, between notes and there's a chord, some chords in there and stuff. So we'll see how it goes. So like I said, one oscillator right now. Um, you can mix in two and three. So you can see these are off. Noise and ring as well. So I can mix in two. And you can hear it just got a little louder. And that's basically just because it's the same setting, same tune and everything. Um, so I'm gonna change the pitch of oscillator two. So selecting oscillator two. So you hear instantly. Do some detune kind of sounds. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna turn on the third oscillator, giving it a level. And again, I'm gonna adjust it. So I'm selecting it here. There you go. So that's pretty cool. All right, so already sounds a lot better. <laughs> um, but what we're gonna do is switch up the waveform of oscillator. Oh, let's just pick two. Not a lot of change. Shouldn't have messed with the tune. All right, that's pretty cool. Um, but now I'm gonna switch from just modifying oscillator two to all three. 
So I don't know if you can see it on camera, but all three are lit now. So now I can adjust the pitch of all of them. <laughs> Which is cool. But now they're all together. So again, if I want to get some different tunings going on. sounds pretty bad and that's on me <laughs> synthesis enough to know how the whole, all the semitone things work, but I always know that like 6, 12, 24, 18 are usually good numbers to hop to. But anyway, that's a different discussion for a different day. Bring the level down a little bit on the synth. Add that in. So now, eh, actually I'm going to turn that so now I'm going to jump to, um, we've got the different, you know, the level controls of the oscillators. Which is pretty cool. You can add in noise. If you wanted to. But I'm going to leave that out for now. So I'm going to jump to the envelope section and um, we're going to play with the amp envelopes. It's only on three right now. So there you go, you hear that attack ramp in. And you can see the values change up here if you need a reference, but... Sound. All right, um, we're gonna work on the filter. So right now it's on low pass. And you hear how it, uh, it jumped to my knob position when I wiggled it. But as I mentioned, you can set it to where you have to reach the value first. But the filter sounds really nice. Take off the resonance. And the drive control is pretty cool too. A little crunchy. We'll switch this to, um, we'll do a band pass. So we can have the envelope amount up and that switch now to the filter envelope. And now we're adjusting the filter envelope. Pretty interesting. Okay, now we're going to jump into the chorus flanger. Brighten it up a little bit. Okay, 
but you can hear you can get to pretty crazy rates. I'm bringing the level up a little bit more on the mixer. Pretty cool. You can adjust the delay time on the fender. It's a pretty cool sound. And now the delay. And you can hear it kind of behaves like an analog delay with the uh, the stretching and the pitch bending. Pretty fun to play with. And now we're in some really big sounds, which is really cool. Sync button here. But I like it unsynced so you find your own offset kind of thing. Pretty cool. All right, we'll leave this here and we'll switch to the format filter section. So let's get that going. Helps that this is a little bit brighter. Mix out some of the delay a little bit too. So you can hear it's very vowel-y. Which is really cool. You can mix it super hard and really hear it. Or just mix in a little bit, which is pretty cool. All right, I still have all three oscillators selected, so I'm just gonna um, go through the waveforms and see what other kind of sounds we can uh, get. So let's find out. It's a little nicer. And now more in the noise territory. All FM. That's a nice sound. some noise to it, which is filtered. So you can, on the envelope, you can like reverse it, I think, and but I think in the middle is kind of like ignoring it more or less. Go back to the amp envelopes. You 
get rid of the noise. So it's a little peaky in my mixer. All right, we're going to stop that, um, and we're just going to switch now to um, the, uh, the first preset. So to do that, you can, um, oops, it's on the delay mix mode here, but you can switch. So you can see in this, the select knob, you can go through, so A1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. It goes through the alphabet, um, so tons of presets. But if you want to jump around a little bit faster, you can change this value knob, and you can see it's changing the letter. So it's like the bank, basically. So you can hop a lot faster faster further along if you want to but i'm just going to run through um this is a loner unit that i've had for a while so some of these presets i don't know what it's going to come with i don't know how much these are modified or um custom or even i think some of them are even duplicated across some of the banks so um you know your mileage may vary there or it probably won't vary it'll be what it would be if you were to buy one but um it just might be different from mine so anyway let's see what we get so this is a hoover sound Classic techno e trance type. Pretty cool. What's also cool is you can go through the presets and um, you see it still says load. I don't know, again, I don't know if you can read that um, on camera, but um, you can preview them, which is pretty cool. So you can kind of hear without committing what you might um, switch into. So you can yes or no that. So if I were to know it, it goes back to the patch that we were building initially, which this isn't the initialized patch from scratch. It's what I was working on. So because I have modified it, it's nice that it allows you to hop back without losing your work basically, um, which is really cool. But in this case, we want to move forward. So, so there you go. So when I hit menu there, then it brought up what the patch sounded like before we started. But you can hit no, and it goes back to where we left it, which is cool. So we heard the Hoover. Let's listen to something kind of nice. So we'll leave it there. but I'm clearing out what I recorded. So let's see if we can do something a little different now. It's a little gentler. So again, we're working with the initial, or not the initial, the, the patch as it was saved. But now we're gonna tweak it. So let's see what we can do with it. Get some delay.
pretty cool. We get some formant filter going. Pretty cool, we can see we got three oscillators going so we can play with the levels of each of those. And I feel like this could be kind of almost like a performance feature too, because you can just mix them in and out. Cool. I'm gonna mess with the chorus flanger now. Let's see. It might um, get weird for a second, but let's find out. Selected. So I'm actually going to select all three now. They're pretty cool. You can see obviously how you can take things pretty far. I'm just going to now manipulate the oscillators and just see or the waveform of the oscillators and see what we get. And as you can see, as I'm changing them, they move in relationship to each other. That's pretty cool. All right, enough of that one. Let's move on to the next patch. I gotta get out of there. And remember, that's where we started. So pretty different, pretty cool. We'll go with this FM bass sound. Something weird and 
atonal. I like the sounds out of this thing. Even if, you know, I'm starting with a preset that's not something I would use, I feel like I can find something that's pretty interesting sounding almost, almost always. Definitely always, actually, because there's so much control. You can really find some cool stuff. <laughs> this is a funny preset. I don't know why, it just makes me think of like weird little, I don't know, like meme goats or something. I don't know what that is. I need to look up what that actually is. Maybe it is an animal. It sounds like one. Hey, hey. <laughs> All right. sequence here.
I really like the effects section. I don't know if I've already said that, um, but it definitely has a lot of character. Again, play with the oscillator levels. I think this one's just um, one of the uh, noise ones. Let's see, I'm gonna adjust the, adjust the pitch of oscillator one. So just one selected. And then just the ADSR will make the release of this one longer. Sounds pretty good. Add some formant in. Pretty cool. All right. And that's where we started. So, and we'll jump back. We'll A B M. Pretty different. And as you see, when I switch through these presets, the oscillator lights light up. So, I don't know, it's just cool that it does that so you can see what's going on a little bit better even though the knobs don't, you know, change or anything. You at least know what oscillators are mixed in and all that good stuff and what uh, waveforms they have. That's cool, let's do something kind of arcadey. So, I guess I'll load that. I'll clear this track.
All right, pretty crazy. I got lost in that for a second. Pretty fun. And again, that's where we started. Says Arkaski, we'll go with that.
really hear the format in this one. Sounds pretty modern. That was a surprise. Okay, good stuff. Oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> good times. Cool, kind of like a kind of like a pipe organ or an organ anyway. Pretty cool. Sort of vocoder esque. Sounds like this one makes use of sample and hold to get those random sound effect.
Also, this is eight voices, so um, you can do a lot of polyphony going on. So that's why it's kind of cool, um, like laying down that the, the little two note thing just to jam on top of without worry. Super trim. That's pretty cool though. presets i'm gonna stop here though but as you can hear the nf1 is quite capable sounds really good a lot of hands-on control and uh yeah it's just really fun And there we go. That's the NF1 paired up with the Syntact. Okay, so what do I think of the NF1? Um, I think it's a really capable poly synth that um, isn't afraid to be digital. I find that refreshing because um, pretty much everything else I have is analog. I had the Digitone, I've since sold it, um, but I wanted to get something that um, was digital but not FM. FM's pretty harsh, um, you know, it's a little bit more brash, and I think um, virtual analog-esque sounds, you get a lot more of those really lush sort of strings and pads and things like that, and it's just a nice change of pace um, compared to um, some of the other stuff that at least I had in my setup. Clearly the control scheme is great. Um, all of the hands-on control, just knobs for days. And I like this haphazard sort of um, layout. I know it's probably not for everyone, but I think it's fresh. I think it's cool. Um, I like the um, attention to, I don't know, design and <laughs> layout and stuff. Um, and it may look a little haphazard, but I mean, it's really not. It's as um, ergonomic and usable as anything else. I mean, you have your sections, you know, they've got the lines sort of marking everything out. And um, after using it for a little bit, it feels really natural just to hop around. Um, it's really no big deal, so don't let that sway you in any way. Obviously the format filter is really cool, really unique to uh, this synth. Um, definitely not something you see on a lot of synthesizers. Um, and the normal filter sounds great and everything. And yeah, just lots of modulation options. Like I said, I didn't go into um, all the routing for those and how you do all that stuff. It's a little more technical than I wanted to go into today. It was really more of a sound demo and just kind of an overall overview and approach to the NF1.
Build quality, I think, is good. The chassis is a tank. Um, it's it's all metal everywhere, and that's really cool. Um, you can get rack ears for it. It has wooden end cheeks as well. Um, I just don't have those on here right now. I like the little bit more modern look of them without it, personally. And these knobs are custom Modor designed. Um, they're pretty cool. I like the um, size of them. The texture is a little bit, um, a little rough kind of, which is, you know, a plus or minus depending on how you look at it. Um, obviously they're, they're grippy, which is nice, um, but they feel a bit like that kind of 3D printed vibe, um, which, you know, is for you to decide if you like that or not. Another thing to note, this is the first version, which um, had some issues with um, the way the knobs were mounted. Um, so you can tell the first version from the second because the first version doesn't have a USB jack on the back. So if you happen to be looking at one of these um, on the used market, um, that's something to look out for. The first ones, you can definitely get them for probably a little bit better of a deal, um, maybe because of that, um, because some of the, the knobs, like this, this Formit one, for example, is pretty loose on this uh, model, but this one's changed hands quite a bit. Like I said, again, it's a, it's a loner. So um, yeah, it's probably been shipped a bunch and, uh, you know, been in varying degrees of um, stewardship from whoever happens to have it at the time and how they are going to treat it. But um, I feel like there's no real issues with anything. So I wouldn't really be too worried about it. Just know that you might have a couple wiggly ones um, if you get the first gen. Clearly the sound is great. Um, it's very capable. Um, yeah, you can craft all kinds of sounds that um, I feel like it covers a good amount of territory. You can get rough and um, sort of grimy with it. You can get really nice and pleasant and have really atmospheric, you know, um, ambient sort of sounds as well. So I think um, it's all a matter of just how you get your hands in here and um, start molding and shaping everything and having all of these options right at hand um, really makes that easy to find something that you're happy with. So would I recommend it? I think I would. Um, I, I personally really like it. Um, I definitely would consider purchasing one of these myself um, after I send this back. Um, yeah, I think it's perfect for somebody who wants something that's maybe a little different, um, a little oddball. Um, it looks really cool in the studio. Um, I like the, I like the aesthetics personally. And, uh, yeah, I think it sounds great and, um, pretty easy to work with. Um, nice again with all the control stuff here, not having to menu dive too often. Um, I feel like that's pretty awesome for, uh, the level of capability that this has to not have to go in there too much is, uh, really cool. Shout out to Modor for sending this out um, to let me borrow. Really appreciate that. It's really cool because I'm looking to demo more hardware on my channel and um, just give folks out there a sense of some of the options that are available um, that maybe you don't see as often that aren't, you know, the, the ones that everyone has. Um, and I think this is definitely sort of like an underdog and uh, a synth that I think deserves a little bit more love. They also have the DR2, which is their digital drum machine with the faders, and that looks like a lot of fun too. I hope to be able to try that one out sometime as well, um, but for now, um, that's going to be it. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments um, what you thought of the NF1, and if you're interested in seeing more videos like this from me. Um, obviously, I focus a lot more on pedals and effects and stuff, but um, I'm trying to branch out a little bit and provide different kinds of content for different kinds of people. But all right, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.